this is the presenting and even though my voice may seem a little bit raspy but I feel way better right now and today I come to you with a perfume video because I know this is what you like the most and it's gonna be a little bit different um, um, this time because I don't have the fragrance but I want to show you something on my Instagram I talk about um, my mother's perfumes and I talk about this fragrance um, that probably some of you may know and my memory about this fragrance and the way it smells my mother has different bottles of this fragrance as well so I know how it smells and I can smell it right now but at the attic I found something different today and I want to just uh, tell you that beforehand that I love vintage. Vintage is my love and I love this dust of time uh, on the vintage thing, this energy. And yeah, I'm a vintage collector as well because I have this uh, vintage opium battle, ETT, and this is uh, my favorite version of opium. Plus, I have this uh, vintage Samsara perfume bottle. And I think, uh, you know, I come came to opium because my aunt from the Netherlands, she used to use it and it was nostalgic. And, you know, I uh, also have this bottle, which is modern, but Tom Ford, uh, Tom Ford's mother used to use opium and this is uh, how I wanted to get to know what he had in his mind. But today's video is not about samsara, it's not about opium, but about the vintage treasures I found on my mother's attic. Oh, if you want to um, read about my memory and my mother's influence on my fragrance taste and life, go to my Instagram. It's at underscore presenting. I'm going to try to put the name on the screen right now but you know like a second ago i remember it seeing it but i didn't like connecting the two i didn't know that it's it is what it is uh but you know what i found look at this this is vintage soap box of nina ricci's l'air du temps it's empty it's empty i will show you how it looks inside hold on this is how it looks inside. The inside smells horribly, to be honest with you. Look at it. Yeah, but, you know, I didn't know that my mother has, like, this vintage soap box of L'Heure du Temps. And look at all these pictures. They say a little bit about the fragrance. The fragrance had this dove's motif. And let me talk a little bit about this fragrance. It's called L'Air du Temps, which means Air of Times. And it was released in 1948, so almost right after the end of the Second World War. And uh, it's supposed to represent the new times, the peace. Uh, that's why the doves that are bringing... Um, the flowers and the better times coming after the war but if you see this dove is holding a specific kind of uh, flower which is a carnation and probably this is why I never um, gravitated towards this fragrance because the notes in this fragrance are carnation and cloves that are not my favorite fragrance notes because they smell a little bit spicy let me put it here for now and they're a little bit of spicy and um, i smelled this fragrance before and it has like this uh, retro uh, soapy vibe but it is a little bit of spicy and it reminds me also a little bit about charlie blue so probably charlie blue was kind of uh, purposefully or not purposefully influenced by L'Heure du Temps. And I'm not sure if L'Heure du Temps is the first fragrance in the same vibe. But what I also wanted to show you, and I had it before, is this Nina Ricci travel uh, 
fragrance travel version of uh, Leur Titan. So let me show you the writing in the bottom. It says Nina Ricci Paris, Leur Titan, made in France. It's 7.5 ml. And I'm not sure what concentration it is. It could be even pure perfume. And when you open it, it looks like this. It's golden. Here it shows an Arnina Ricci. And here on the bow, you can also see initials Nina Ricci. It doesn't have a fragrance anymore. It smells very soapy. Actually, it smells very nice, but I'm sure that uh, when you spray it on your body in a full concentration, not just only on the atomizer, it's very empowering. I smelled it like this year in a beauty base uh, on Stratford in London, but it wasn't my cup of tea. And, uh, but I'm sure it's very important fragrance. You know, the whole idea behind it, uh, the air of new times, the hope that it has, the nostalgia that it has. And it brings like the sad memories and tries to, you know, give them fresh air, new breath. Uh, it's very moving and sad at times when I think about it. Oh, I didn't show you. In the bottom of this vintage soap box. I don't know if you can see. It also says uh, Nina Ricci Paris. Uh, it's a hundred grams. And it's made in France. Yeah. So this was my presentation of Nina Ricci L'Air du Thames. I hope you like this kind of video. It's a little bit different because it's not talking about uh, the fragrance itself too much because I don't know it. I don't know how it develops on my skin. Uh, I will post a picture of the modern uh, version here. I am attaching the link to Fragrantica uh, in a down bar below. And let me know down in the comments if you're a fragrance of uh, if you're a fan of vintage fragrances and uh, do you know Leur de Thames? Do you have any memories with that? Uh, my mother said that she used to um, use it because she got it in Pevex, and Pevex was a place um, that was importing the uh, luxury. Well, not only luxury, but at the times in Poland where during the communism. Um, you know, uh, it was luxury products uh, from the West, and um, this is where she got um, her Nina Ricci fragrance, and, you know, she wasn't even aware what kind of gem she has, but she always had a really good taste in fragrance, I must admit, and she's a great influence uh, to me as well. So you can read more about it uh, on my Instagram. So that was all for now. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Kisses. Oh.